What's up, buddy? I'm chilling, man. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I was looking at this new album came out today called Same Truck. I didn't know really what the album title meant, but then I read about it, and it's basically kind of an ode to your truck that you've had for the past 10 years. So it, the conversation started there when we started the song, because uh, I had my same truck. Her name's Loretta. I'm a driver till the wheels fall off, and um, love that truck. But then the song kind of evolved into just talking about how, man, we're on the same team here in the same boat. We're, you know, let's build each other up instead of tear each other down. And then we turn it into a country song with dirt roads and tobacco fields and all that good stuff. So, This truck, though, was it the truck that you won on American Idol? It was. And me and Lauren really screwed that up for everybody else after us because they told us, they said, hey, any Ford, any option. And, like, Lauren got this super cool Shelby. I got my truck with every option possible. <laughs> and I think Ford was kind of like, oh, wait a second. And I think next year it was just like, Ford Focus. <laughs> that's, that's what you get. <laughs> uh, Scotty McCreary is here. And that truck, you're still driving it. Oh, is that your it. main truck? It is my main truck. I, I've spilled a few smoothies in it recently, so it's starting to smell a little blueberry-like, but it's uh, it's awesome. She's great. At what point do you you know, get one of these fancy trucks? Because you're a big, famous country star now. Like, when do you get one of these big Raptors or, you know, something... They tried to sell me on like a big Raptor too, like back then. And I, I don't know, man. I just have always wanted an F one fifty. My first car was really run down, just a little bit of paint still left on it, Forerunner. And uh, I just wanted. A, I've always wanted the truck, so that's. I think I'll stick with her. Your next single is called "Damn Straight," which is a reference mm -hmm. to George Strait. Was there an issue about putting the D word in a song title? <laughs> um. I don't think 17-year-old Scotty would have done that, you yeah. know, but, uh, you know, I think we've been doing it 10 years now, and it's it's a dang good song, man. I'm I'm, uh, I'm pretty proud to put my name on it. I had a freak-out moment when I heard it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is this is cool. So so they, they sent you the song. Uh, Trent Tomlinson and Jim Collins wrote the song. When you get this song, because you write so many of your own songs, Yeah. does it have to be extra, extra good? For you to cut a song that you didn't write? It's not that it has to be extra, extra good. It's that it has to, like, I've got to feel it in my core. Like, i got to believe it. i got to feel it. And I was actually, I was down on the coast preparing for a hurricane by myself, like, putting sandbags out and stuff. And the song came through on my phone from the label. And they said, hey, take a look, take, take a listen. I said, okay, I'll just put it on while I'm working. And uh, I just kind of had to stop. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this is... This is a cool song. So I didn't want to, I was like, was well, I crazy? So I texted my wife. I was like, what do you think? Texted my boys, what do you think? And they all kind of had that same mini freak out. And I'm a massive George Strait fan. It was my first concert. Reba and Leanne Walmack were there. Like it was, it was a good first dive into country music. So uh, yeah, it's cool. Well, like what life to me looks, when I look at you, it looks like you live a very balanced life. Like you've been able to find wife, dog, music am i right about that it's like the most important thing to me is that balance uh i think just especially the way i got started and it was so crazy i mean like just everything at once i think i realized man i gotta i gotta find some normalcy here and that's why even like back in the day we had a tour with brad paisley on thursday through saturday and monday through wednesday i was back at my at garner high school playing baseball just so i could have that balance because i mean i this is just a crazy world we live in, and a crazy job. It's an amazing job, but I think I would go a little nutty if it was just that every day, you know. And my wife is awesome. She's the rock of our family, and she's just the coolest. Like she's so cool, and lucky to find her. You were playing baseball in high school while you were touring with Paisley. Did, were, did the kids treat you different? Oh, the other the other team, I got razzed nonstop, <laughs> man. I mean, they were like singing to me, stick to singing. No, oh, you know. there was one game too. We were playing East Wake. I was pitching. And, uh, I mean, I'm, like, have made my first record actively, actively on tour, and I'm pitching, and I get a line drive back to the throat. I mean, just I've never been hit in the throat before in my life on the pitcher's mound, and, of course, now I do. And you can hear the whole stadium just, <gasps> and, like, the umpires came out. They, like, had, a like, an EMT come out, and I was just rubbing. I did, like, a, a 
saying like one line. It's like, oh, I'm good, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. But, what people don't know is Scotty was a soprano until that incident. Oh, <laughs> yes. And yes. now exactly. that is low. Yeah, now that's that's what happened. Crazy how life changes like that, man. And everybody you know, that yells, stick to singing, you did. I, I, yeah, you I, showed I, them. I stick really, to singing. He goes, oh, okay, you got it. I definitely will. How good is it to be back out on the road playing shows? Have no idea. You haven't done yeah. a show? No, no. You I'm no saying you I was going to say, because I have a whole list of shows that, he, that he's supposed to have done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> haven't shown up. I was like, no, it, it's been awesome. It really, fans have been great. It took a little while to get the sea legs again. I mean, I was, I was very nervous, like sheets of paper on, on the yeah. floor with like lyrics and chords. And uh, it was like I had a project due or something, but it was, uh, we, we made it through that. And now it just feels like home again. And, and it's been awesome. You have a song on your record that you wrote. It's called Carolina to Me. Yeah. And so, you know, I think you're one of the few that still making it, but have decided you can make it while mostly living somewhere else and not Nashville. You know, it was, um, I feel like if I could do it those first few years, I can do it now because, like, the pandemic taught us we had to learn how to work from home and stuff. So now I used to have to block out times. Like, I'm coming to Nashville for a week. I'm riding twice a day every day for, like, a little boot camp. And now it's like, hey, I'm, I'm on a I'm Tuesday at home. I was going to mow the grass, but no, hey, they, we're going to write a song, and then I'll do that later and hop on Zoom. And, uh, yeah, Carolina is just home for me, man. My roots are so deep. I always thought eventually I'd make it here and be, you know, settled down here, but uh, my roots are too deep, I think, down there. Are you a NC State guy? Unfortunately, yeah. I, I oh, man, we had a, yeah. Well, we, well listen, yeah, we got, you guys beat us baseball. Talk, but barely. I had a, um, <laughs> I was doing a show in Durham, and so I get up on stage, and the worst mistake that I can make, especially if I'm doing a stand-up show, is to acknowledge a sports team in the crowd because then everybody else starts to scream. Mm. And I'm in Durham, and there are, there's North Carolina, there's obviously Duke, mm -hmm. and I say, hey, are most of you guys North Carolina people? And they go, ah, and, the others, they, and then, I hear, <laughs> then I hear boos, and I'm like, who's booing? And they're like, Duke, ah, but there's like one little contingent of really rowdy, oh, like man. in a corner, like 11 people that somehow are more obnoxious than the rest. And I was like, where are you guys from? They're like, we're from NC State. Yeah. I was like, all right. <laughs> That's us, man. That's it. <laughs> That's all. we got to be rowdy, man. We've been put through the ringer my entire life. I don't know why I ended up there. My dad was born in Puerto Rico, grew up in Maine, and then he decided, I'm just going to go to NC State for college. And it's, uh, it's been quite torturous, I'll be honest. Like, we always get right there, and then we find just the craziest ways to lose and um, – but, like, in the NCAA tournament for basketball, you always see NC State winning it because of Jimmy V and the last second shot. So it's like we always see ourselves winning. Back in the day, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we just can't do it anymore. Are you uh, – you're obviously a Patriots fan. Are you still a Tom Brady guy? Huge. Even though he's it, in Tampa? It's like a huge, like, divisive thing in the Patriots community. But my thing is I did not root for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at all. If they make a sack, you know, great. If they, you know, make an interception or run the ball in, great. But if Tommy, if Tommy Brady throws a touchdown and it's a dime, I'm gonna get excited for that. That's my guy. When they play this season, the Patriots or the tent or the both, Bucks. they're gonna play each oh, other. Oh, they are playing each in, other in New England. That's, I think I might like actually shed a tear it, that day like, or implode. Yeah, his, his, oh. his organs just, just <laughs> cannot take it. I still have a picture of him in my apartment. Yeah, he's. He's the goat. Wait, what? With, with him or just not with him? him. Of yeah. him. Oh, like I his thought poster? he was there. Oh, it's like inspirational. You see greatness on the wall. You're like, mm -hmm. I want to be like Tom Brady. Have you met Tom Brady? So here's the thing. Um, I've been around him a lot. I did Good Morning America, and like the dressing room was literally like there was one wall between us. And I'm like trying to work up the nerve. I'm nervous as I'll get out. And he's right there. So I kind of walk out to see. And no joke, he had like 10 Seven foot tall Russian veto like security <laughs> guards in tuxedos. And I was just like, I'm not getting through those guys. And I just walked right back in with my tail between my legs. So but not yet. Not yet. Maybe one day. Maybe so one day. Scotty McCurry is here. Oh, what up? I was gonna tell a funny story about that too. I did a rate I did an interview with the station down in Tampa. And they're like, dude, we just talked to Tom Brady and he is a massive fan of yours. And I was just like, stop, stop. Like my heart starts pumping. And they're like, no, like he legitimately could not stop talking about you. And then they start playing the clip, and he's like, Scotty, get over here. Attaboy, Scotty. I love you, Scotty. And he's talking to his wide receiver, Scotty Miller, on the team, but they they had me for a second. They had me in the first half, not going to lie. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. this is going to be weird then. 
because we'd set it up on line two. Tom Brady is on. Oh, man. I'm just kidding. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody Everywhere could. he goes, if we just take shots at him about Tom Brady. <laughs> so tell me about when you wrote, you know, how you doing up there, where it came from, what you're, what you're singing about there. Yeah, I think this is such a special song. It's the perspective on a prayer that I had never even thought of before. And faith for me is the biggest part of my life. And um, we're in the room, and it's like, man, has anybody ever thought to ask God how he's doing? Because it's supposed to be a relationship, you know? And and uh, I was like, no, it's like, it's always asking. It's always, hey, man, can you help me here? Hey, God, can you help me here? Hey, the, the Patriots are down right now, man. Can you just help them score one touchdown? Um, and obviously the world, it's so crazy out there right now. And, and so we just kind of wrote the song around that and kind of maybe what he's thinking up there and just a very conversational song with God from a perspective I hadn't heard before. And I, I fell in love with it the day we wrote it. Same truck is out today. Including that song, which is the last track. That that's a good last track because you leave like feeling like, all right, that felt good. Yeah, like it, I like it, that. It felt like a good one to end it on, and the band does this rock and outro and just puts a nice little button on it. I think. Are right, you guys check out same truck, the n- next single? We, you played that earlier. Damn straight. That's right. Damn straight, we did. Feel good about that. Uh, any, ever, anything else that we haven't gotten to, Scotty? Man, you crushed it. I did. Thank uh, you. I'd like to say that, too. I I did. I did. I feel like I did a good job. I was prepared. I listened to the record. And so on that, we'll we'll bid farewell. Bid farewell. All right. See y'all. There he is. Scotty McCurry, everybody. Be back in a second. This is about the show.